Hello again, everybody. How are you? Uh, good evening, and welcome back to another uh, pet preliminary. Uh, well, it's called the preliminary exam now, and not the pet, but the B1 class here. Uh, my name is Bradford, and today we are going to look at uh, a few uh, animals, some vocabulary that may or may not be new for you. However, if the words are not new, we certainly are going to dive into a little bit of the pronunciation and uh, to look out for some tricks and traps about the spelling. Okay, I'm also going to give you a little uh, trick into how to know how to pronounce a word the first time you see it when it ends with a silent E. Okay, so lots of times you have words that end with a silent E. For example, like, L-I-K-E. We don't say the E, it's silent. Um, and then later we will look at the past perfect. Okay, this is the past perfect. And obviously, everybody is welcome to say hello in the comments. I have the comments open. I want this class to be as interactive as possible. So if you have any questions, any comments, any concerns, any doubts, please let me know in the comments section or in the chat section, uh, which would be easier than the comments, obviously. Okay, so let me just type a quick hello here to everybody. Hello, everyone. And feel free to introduce yourself. Hello, where you're from. Uh, I imagine that most of you will be from Valencia, but you never know. I know that I have some people who are interested from Malaga and some people from Bilbao. So that is quite interesting if everybody can uh, let us know where you're from. Um, so, without any further ado, let's move on to our vocabulary for the day, okay? So, we're going to look at um, animals first. Um, the length of the class won't be very long today. I imagine it'll probably be around 20 minutes, more or less, give or take, depending on the questions and comments uh, that you have and how long it takes for me to, to dive into those questions um, with you. Sorry, I'm looking down here. I'm trying to adjust my screen. So let's move on now, and we're going to look at our animals, which is quite easy, I admit, but I want to start off slow, start off easy. And all of these uh, vocabulary words, by the way, are uh, definitely um, involved, oops, I'm on the wrong side, are definitely uh, part of or have appeared on the preliminary exam, okay? So these are words that you should know because they do come up on the exam. And remember, this exam is uh, a very general exam. It is not a specific exam, so they touch on a lot of different vocabulary and Animals is one of the classics that everybody should know. So let's take a look here at the animals we've got. And we can look on with the pronunciation. Okay, the pronunciation, remember, is going to be key to this vocabulary section. Gorilla. Okay, now in Spanish, a lot of the Spanish people, when you pronounce it, you immediately see the LL and you want to say gorilla. Gorilla. Yeah, but it's not, okay? It's very similar to Spanish, but it's not. Uh, we don't have the LL, the e -L -E sound in English. So it's gorilla, gorilla. And we don't, we don't trill the R either. It's gorilla. It's a gorilla, okay? Um, when I say the word, the best method for you to practice at home would be to repeat the word as well, okay? So you listen carefully, then you try to imitate. Don't just try to say the word correctly. Imitate me, okay? If somebody says, oh, I bet, can you do an American accent? Can you do a British accent? So I want you to try to imitate my accent and my pronunciation, and that will help you to say it correctly. So gorilla, gorilla, all right? A gorilla. It's a big gorilla. It's a big black and brown gorilla, yeah? Gorillas can be quite scary, actually, a gorilla, okay? Gorilla, 
Gorilla. G O R I L L A, Gorilla. All right, let's move on. If I can't imagine that this is going to be new, but here we go. Some, it's new for some people, certainly. And here is a, a really good example of what I was saying earlier. This is a good example of what you can see with the silent E. Okay, so this is a whale. We have actually two letters here that are silent, that we don't say the H, and we don't say the L. I'm sorry, we do say the L. We don't say the E. We don't say the H, and we don't say the E. Don't say the L. That would be silly. Whale. Whale. Okay, now let's talk about that E. Okay, when you have a silent E at the end of the word, what it does is it affects the vowel before it. So if you look here, we have the silent E. Well, that has an effect on this A. So what we do is we know when we read it that this is a long A. Okay, and a long A is simply the way that the letter is pronounced in the alphabet, A. And we have all of the vowels, A, E, I, O, U. When you say those letters that way, A, E, I, O, U, that's the long uh, vowel sound, okay? That's the long vowel sound, A. So here, when you have the silent E at the end, which we have here in whale, it makes the A long. Way, A, A, whale, okay? And we know that it's not wall or we, there is no other pronunciation. It is pronounced A, way, whale. Okay, my example from before, which was like, L-I-K-E, if you look at the silent E, it affects the I, li, I, like. So we know that it's not leak, it's not leaky, it's not lick, okay, um, because of that E at the end, li, like. Now, is this 100% uh, every single word? But no, of course not. There are no 100% rules in English. There is, there, you will always find an exception. But here is a very good example, whale, of the silent E making the A uh, long. Okay, so whale, w whale, W-H-A-L-E with two silent uh, letters, whale. And this, I don't know what kind of whale it is, but you have blue whales and sperm whales and killer whales and shark whales. I have no idea. But I'm going to ask you later about your uh, wildlife knowledge. How's that? Yeah, in tus conocimientos de salvaje. Yeah, the animales salvaje, salves, salvo. Bah, this isn't my Spanish lesson. This is your English lesson. So let's go. Whale. Next. We have spider, I. Now look again. Here we have another E, er. Okay, now really this is a silent E. You don't say spider. Okay, it goes right into the er, spider, er. You skip right over the E, er. So if it's a silent E, again, it's going to affect the vowel before it so it's spy, either, spider. I know you know how to say spider, okay? This is going to help you read more. In the future, it'll help you read better. When you see a new word that has a silent E or an E at the end, okay? The E's at the end of the word are always silent, I think. Remember, it's not 100%. I'm sure somebody can put maybe in the chat a word where the E is not silent, but I'm pretty sure they're silent. And there are certainly examples of words that end with a silent E, but they don't have that effect on the vowel. But let's use the general rule. At the B1 level, your level, it's a good rule to have. 
Okay, it's a good rule to apply to most of the words that we see. Okay, so let's move on. Spider, I, spider. Shark, shark. Okay, important to know. We have to know, we have to be able to talk about different fish, different wildlife, and they might ask you questions. You might have to have a reading about zoos, a reading about uh, jungles, a reading about the ocean, and you must know the vocabulary involved with different parts of the world. So, shark, bat, bat, nothing difficult here, but it's a word that has nothing to do with the Spanish word, bat, and murciélago, obviously very different. Okay, let's keep going. Snake. Here is our sneaky, silent E again. Snake. S-N-A-K-E. Snake. A. Snake. Okay, and that's why... Oops, I touched it. That's why the A sounds like an A. It's not A, ah, snack, or anything like that. It's snake. And it's not an A, snare. No, A, snake. This one, penguin. The difficult thing here in penguin is that we do not really separate the N and the G when you pronounce penguin. It's not penguin, like in Spanish, penguin. It's penguin. So the N and the G is almost like the ING when you say, like the NG and ING when you say jumping or reading. It's penguin, penguin. So it's back in the back of your throat. We don't separate the N and the G. It's not penguin, penguin, a penguin, penguin. Okay. Can you name any other species of bird, fish, or insect? And I think I have here, yes, my table. So I need you all, well, four of you, to tell me uh, different species of bird, fish, or insect that you know. And I'll give you the first one, which is salmon. Salmon is a good one to start off with. That's a good fish species that people often eat. Can you tell me an insect or tell me a bird that you know the name of? And I'll wait patiently. There are so many, and maybe all of this vocabulary is certainly uh, going to be new, okay? When you know generally one or the other, you know, okay, I know birds, I know fish, I know insects, but what are the names? You know, like, people get into trouble with trees or um, different kinds of, well, like this, birds, fish. You go to the supermarket and it says... Uh, well, I don't know, in Spanish, dorado or whatever, pez espada. How do you say that in English, these species of fish or insects? Tell me an insect. Tell me a bird. Tell me a fish. Anybody. I'm going to, with your permission, I'm going to get a drink of water, if you can excuse me. And that's the gas coming out of my sparkling water. Oh, I guess you get to hear the whole thing. Okay. So, anybody, tell me a fish, tell me a bird, or an insect that you know in English. And I'll give you, let's say, three or four in each one. A bird, an insect, or a fish. Salmon, for example. Anything? Don't be shy. I want this to be interactive. Yeah? Let's be interactive. Let's try to get like a, a classroom vibe going on. Okay? Let's try to get some sort of classroom feeling. I'll give you a bird. I'll give you a bird. There you go. Duck. Everybody knows duck. Right? I'll give you an insect. Uh, ant. Can't say spider because spider's not an insect, right? An ant. Any other... 
birds, fish, or insects. Okay. Don't be shy. Unless unless there's something wrong with the chat. Maybe maybe you can't hear me on the chat or something. Can you Maybe there's something wrong that uh, nobody is able to to write in any of our suggestions. So, all right, I'm going to give you a couple that I'm sure are going to be new. Maybe. How about a seagull? I don't know if it, yeah, seagull. A seagull. Seagulls are white and they fly around the beach and um, you can always find them near water. Uh, very often near ports, you will find a seagull. Um, yeah, they eat lots of garbage, unfortunately. And sometimes um, you can find them with, uh, you know, garbage around their beaks and stuff. It's very sad, but a seagull. Fish. What about fish? Give me, I'm going to get, no, I'll give you a couple more birds. Um, how about an eagle? We know eagle. Falcon. Um, a bluebird. And finally, um, I'll give you one more. Uh, oh, wait. F Ugo. Hello, Ugo. Fish. Tuna. Absolutely. Another one that we eat. Another another fish we eat. Wonderful. Tuna. I like that one. Any other fish? We saw a shark. Um, how about... Uh, we can do more fish. Um, how about this one? Monkfish. Monkfish. Yeah, monkfish is rape. Monkfish. Or uh, trout. Trout is another one that we eat. Um, how about... Um, well, everybody knows the clownfish. Yeah, from Nemo. Okay, the movie, the clownfish. And another one that we eat... Ah, this one we eat quite a bit. Hake. I think, uh, yeah, that's Merlutha. Hake. So there are quite a lot of fish. What about insects? This one everybody hates. <laughs> Cockroach. Cockroach. I don't know to this day. I don't know why they made a song about a cockroach. La cucaracha, la cucaracha. Yeah, good. All right, excellent, Hugo. Butterfly. Perfect. Very good. A butterfly. That's a good one. What do you call it before it becomes a butterfly, Ugo? Do you know? What's it called, the insect, before it turns into a butterfly? That's a good one. What do you call the insect before it turns into a butterfly? Hmm. I can give you a clue. Before it turns into a butterfly, cat, 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 cat. Mm. I don't know if I spelled that right. I missed the R. Caterpillar. A caterpillar. All right, there's a caterpillar before it becomes a butterfly. Antes, before it becomes a butterfly, it's a caterpillar. What else? Any other insects, cockroach, ant, butterfly, caterpillar? There are so many. Beetle. Yeah, so the beetles come from a beetle. All right. Bee. All right. Lots of different birds, lots of different fish, a lot of different insects, okay? Knowing this vocabulary is very powerful uh, for the preliminary exam because one part, very good, now you do, Ugo, now you do, caterpillar, yeah? Caterpillar. Um, 
one part of a grade or the mark of the preliminary exam, the PET exam, is vocabulary. How good is your vocabulary? Can you say what you want to say uh, when you want to say it? So knowing insects, not only the word insect, but different insects or knowing different fish, knowing different birds, okay? Um, that's powerful. Yeah, it's, it's very strong to know these uh, words in English, okay? So let's move back over. All right, we did our species of birds and fish and insects. We can move on and we'll look at the past perfect. Okay, now this is, sometimes is difficult for some people and maybe it's very new for you. But today we're going to look at the past perfect so that you have a good understanding of it. Now, the past perfect is a cousin, un primo, if you want, yeah, of the present perfect. It's just in the past. But what part is the past? Well, it's the auxiliary. So if you look, you've got in the present perfect, which is, we know this, we did this last week, I think. No, we did phrasal verbs. I did present perfect with the, with the key exam, the, the A2. So you can check that video out um, with the A2. If you have difficulty with the present perfect, you can check out the A2 uh, videos from yesterday and from last week. But we have in the present perfect, we have the auxiliary have in the present. I have eaten, you have eaten, he has eaten. It's in the present. It's very simple. It's present perfect. Now, the past perfect, we take the auxiliary have in the past. And what is the past of have? Had. I had eaten. You had eaten. And the application is very similar in Spanish, yeah? It's just yo había comido. With the había is had. It's haber in the past. Okay, it's in the past. I had eaten. We use the past perfect the same as Spanish. It's the same, okay? It's a past event, something in the past, before, antes, before another past event, okay? So it sounds, it sounds a little confusing, but bear with me, okay? So you have two events, two actions in the past, two actions in the past. One action has to, tiene que, one action has to be before the other action, okay? So let's think about uh, taking a shower and eating breakfast. So I had eaten breakfast before taking a shower. It's not the greatest example in the world. I should have worked on that. But it serves, it serves a little bit of a purpose. Two actions in the past. One action before the other. Okay. And the structure... If we look here on the screen, the structure is the same as the present perfect. Okay, we have the subject, the auxiliary, and eaten. And if you look here, I had eaten before the taxi arrived. So I ate, and then the taxi arrived. I ate first, then the taxi arrived. I had eaten before the taxi arrived. So the action of eating happened before it was first. I had eaten before the taxi arrived. And we can use the contractions with hadn't or I'd, you'd, he'd. And we're going to see those in a little bit. Let's, uh, let's move on. So again, auxiliaries. Uh, verbs, I had eaten before the taxi arrived. We've got the contractions here. Okay, and the structure. You had eaten, you'd 
eaten, if you want to make the contraction, if you want to make it short, you'd eaten. So make it short, you'd eaten before the taxi arrived. I'd eaten before the taxi arrived. And then the negative, you can make the had not, hadn't, hadn't. Okay. So only knowing the structure with the had and the participle, the past participle, the same in present perfect, okay, the third column, la tercera columna, yeah, of the, of the irregular verbs, we can do this exercise by concentrating on the structure so we know how to use it. Here's a question in number one. Had Jim ever flown, the participle of fly, before his flight last week? Had Jim ever flown before his flight last week? So he had a flight last week. And we want to know if before that flight, antes, before that flight, had he ever flown? So we use the past perfect. Had he flown before his flight last week? And, well, yes, he had. Yes, he had. Here's the question. Number two. Okay, think about it yourself and try to fill in the blanks yourself. I'm going to give you the answers. Uh, we'll go one by one. The question is the same. So, had your sister, and we saw this verb earlier, had your sister eaten breakfast before she left, antes de que se fue, fuera? <laughs> I don't want to do Spanish. Had your sister eaten breakfast before she left? So, she left. She's gone. I want to know if before she left, when she was here, if she had eaten breakfast. Si había comido. And, well, no, she hadn't. No, she hadn't. Okay. Let's do number three together. James said he... Mm, The movie last year. So last year, before now, he said he had already seen the movie last year. Okay, he had already seen the action of him seeing the movie in the past. It's the same in Spanish. It's very, very similar in Spanish. I got lost because I... Again, the structure. Let's concentrate on the structure. I got lost because I had participle forgotten to bring a map. Okay? When we left the hotel or the house or wherever we were, I didn't remember to bring a map. I got lost later. So I got lost because in the past I had forgotten to bring a map. They hadn't, the negative, we're doing the negative because we see that, you know, in the parentheses we have not study. They hadn't studied English before last year. Studied, okay? Study is regular, so it ends with ed. Okay, studied. Remember, if, it, if the verb ends with a consonant, d, and a Y, we change the Y for an I. Studied English before last year. They hadn't studied English before last year. She, affirmative, she had lived in Leeds before she moved to London. So she moved to London. Before that, she had lived in Leeds. So we have the had Again, the baby had, what's the participle of fall? So it's fall, fell, fallen, fallen asleep. So remember, to fall asleep is dormirse, to fall asleep. Se durmió, he fell asleep. 
the baby fell asleep. In number seven, the baby had fallen asleep before eight o'clock. So before eight o'clock, boom, another action. In the past, the baby had fallen asleep. Negative. I hadn't thought of the question here. No, not here, before, sorry. I hadn't thought of that question before. Can I do one sentence? Yes, absolutely, Ugo. Uh, Ugo, why don't you do number nine for us, please? Yeah, so you've got the negative. I'll wait for you and then we'll have a go. Um, we've got some interaction later as well, Ugo, where I will ask you questions and I want answers from you or you can ask me questions as well, okay? También, as well. So, have a go, yeah, intenta. Have a go at number nine and let's see what you got. Um, you can either write out the whole sentence or simply write in the answer, the had or hadn't and the participle it might it might be faster and any everyone is welcome to um try one okay if someone wants to do number 10 uh go for it have a go if you want to do number 11 have a go okay good hugo says uh sue got wet because she hadn't brought is what hugo says an umbrella okay yeah so again, with the bring, like number four, okay, uh, Sue got wet because she hadn't brought an umbrella. That's it, spot on, okay, spot on, perfect. Spot on means perfect, all right? Spot on, Hugo, very good. Sue got wet because she hadn't brought an umbrella. We are touching and getting very close, estamos acercando, nos estamos acercando, we're getting very close to the third conditional, a tercer condicional, because if Sue had brought, si su hubiese traído, if she had brought an umbrella, she wouldn't have got wet, right? So that's the third conditional. That's another day, another lesson. We're not going to do the third conditional today. So don't worry about that. Let's uh, do number 10. Ugo, did you want to try number 10? Are you going to go and do number 10? Or maybe, maybe shoot directly for 11. I'll do 10. You do 11. And then we can meet because there is some delay in the, in the, in the feed and the sentences, the chat is faster than my video. So, Ugo, if you want to do number 11, I'll do number 10. He, affirmative, own, okay? Own is to, to, to have something in your possession. It's yours, okay? He owned his car for a year before he sold it. So, before he sold it, he had owned... Again, own is regular. He had owned his car for a year before he sold it. He had owned it before a year. So he had it for a year and then he sold it. Both actions are in the past. Own and sell. Both in the past. Own before sell. He had owned it. He had owned his car for a year before he sold it. All right, Ugo, I'm waiting for you, 11. I didn't notice that the traffic light had turned red. Ugo, again, spot on, mate. Way to go, excellent. Okay, I, I didn't notice. I didn't notice that the traffic light had turned red. I went right through it. It was an accident. Yeah, be careful of the poly. Be -doo, be -doo, be -doo. If you go through the, the red light, I didn't notice that the traffic light had turned red. 12. He had ordered rice, but the waiter served him soup. He had ordered rice, but the waiter served him soup. Okay, so again, 
order and serve are both in the past, but order is before serve. So we put the past perfect. Había pedido arroz, pero le sirvió o le dio sopa. Okay. So had ordered. Very good, Hugo. Spot on again. Now we're going to get into a little bit more. Here we have <laughs> this now is going to test your typing skills. Okay. I want you to tell me or to write out a sentence using the sentence halves that we have. Now I'm in the way. Yeah, I'm in the way. So I'm going to get out of the way. Well, it's actually that way. And you can see I have, I couldn't eat the ice cream because, why? What happened before? What happened, what had happened before? ¿Qué había pasado? What had happened? Why, why couldn't I eat the ice cream? I want you to tell me. In a full sentence, I want you to type, I couldn't eat the ice cream because, and then this, and then the second half of the sentence. I always forget which side I have to, to point on. I'm, I'm getting used to, me estoy acostumbrando, I'm getting used to which, which, which way to point, okay? It's a little difficult. Okay, so type out, shoot, number one, and I'm going to get out of the way. Okay, I'm out of the way. Ya no molesto más. I'm not in the way. Tell me number one. Or number two. You could do any of them that you want. Why don't we do this? ¿Por qué no hacemos esto? Yeah, why don't we do this? Write the number, like Hugo has in the chat. Write the number and the sentence that you want to do. Okay? Write the number and the sentence that you want to do. And I will wait for your answers patiently. While you are writing, um, I can tell you a little story. Well, I hope that everybody is safe. Yeah, no one had um, thought that this was going to be so, so, so bad. In Spain, I hope that everybody is safe and everybody's family is safe. Nothing bad has happened. So I am waiting for you to type in, yeah, teclear, I'm waiting, or entrar, meter. I'm waiting for you to type in an answer. We're going to do this exercise together. This is an interactive exercise. I want you to type into the chat the number and the sentence uh, correctly. And hopefully, we have a few people. Uh, Ugo is my champion today. Thank you, Ugo. My participation champion. Okay. I couldn't eat the ice cream because the dog had eaten it. You know, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's wonderful. Um, this is a, a little bit embarrassing, but uh, me da un poco de vergüenza, pero genial. Yeah, that's fantastic because it works. Yeah, funciona. It works. I, I couldn't eat the ice cream because the dog had eaten it. Um, Ugo, that's not the answer that I had anticipated, that I, I was expecting. I wasn't expecting I couldn't eat the ice cream because the dog had eaten it. But pff, spot on, mate. That is fantastic. Wonderful. That works. Um, is there another answer? Is there, can you see another answer? Because the dog eating it will work with another, another sentence, okay? It works with another, another answer. Um, but I like it. I love it. I didn't catch that. No lo pillé. 
cuando estaba revisándolo. <laughs> Excellent. I couldn't eat the ice cream because the dog had eaten it. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. Um, see if we can come up with a different one or shoot for a different number. Yeah, I mean, this is poor because we'd run out of milk or because we'd run out of milk. Um, I couldn't eat the ice cream because we'd run out of milk. Well, I mean, I suppose if, if you run out of milk, we couldn't eat the ice cream. Well, if you make ice cream with milk. Okay. Um, good, good. I'm aiming more at this one here. I couldn't eat the ice cream because it had melted. It had melted. It had melted. All right, what is melt? Melt is when ice cream gets warm and it, and it turns into liquid, melt. Ice will melt when ice turns into, se convierte, yeah, ice turns into water, it melts. It melts. So I couldn't eat the ice cream because it had melted. Anna, Anna has given us number two. All right, let me, uh, let me get out of the way again because I'm in the way. Anna has given us number two. She couldn't go swimming because she had forgotten her swimsuit. Yeah, that's perfect. She couldn't go swimming because she'd forgotten her swimsuit. All right, we saw that example before with forget and the map. She got lost because she had forgotten the map or he got lost because he had forgotten the map or forgot to bring the map. She couldn't go swimming because she had forgotten her swimsuit. Excellent. I still love number one, man. I got to tell you, tengo que deciros, is fantastic. Ugo, I couldn't eat the ice cream because the dog had eaten it. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Maravilloso. Uh, Anna went directly to number four. I didn't want to wake up because I'd stayed up too late. Anna, you're on a roll. You got two now. I didn't want to wake up because I had stayed up too late. That's, I'm telling you, I, yeah. If you're tired and you stay up until, stay up is quedarse despierto, yeah? Stay up, phrasal verb, very good, to stay up. Yeah, no dormirse, quedarte despierto. I didn't want to wake up because I stayed up too late. Stay up. I mean, if you stay, stay is like mantener, right? Stay, and up is arriba or de pie. So stay up, it makes sense. It makes sense. Stay up, quedarse despierto. I didn't want to wake up because I'd stayed up too late. So unless Ugo, a no ser que, unless Ugo is doing number three, Maybe someone can shoot for five or six, and I can do number three. I don't know. The, uh, the latency, the, the delay between, between speaking and, and you hearing me, I think it's about 20 seconds, and it's a little bit frustrating. It's one thing I have to uh, get used to. Okay, Ugo, we've got number three. Fantastic. We wanted to go to the cinema because we'd seen there was a new film showing. Yes. Excellent. We wanted to go. Why did you want to go to the cinema? Well, we had seen that there was a new film. So you saw that there was a new film before you wanted to go. So we had seen something. We had seen that there was a new film. So we wanted to go. Excellent. Thank you, Ugo, for filling in number three. Um, I think this is the Anna and Ugo show. Yeah, let me get out of the way again. Sorry, I'm, I'm in the middle of eight and nine, I think, and ten. I'm blocking, yeah. Anna has given us number six. Oh, I think Anna is doing the even numbers, los pares, and Ugo is doing the odd numbers, los impares, the odd, O-D-D, -D, odd numbers. 
We wanted to go to the cinema. I'm sorry, no, that's Ugo. Uh, Anna, they couldn't sleep because they had drunk too much coffee. Yeah, that's good. That's right. They couldn't sleep because they had drunk too much coffee. That's good. Maybe next time I will, Tachara, I will cross out the ones that you are saying. I can't do that right now, really. I don't think so. I have to learn. Tengo que aprender más sobre estos programas. I have to learn more about these programs. Um, they couldn't sleep because they had drunk too much coffee. I'm guessing, tengo que suponer, I'm guessing Ugo is doing number five for us. Now, I know there are more people, hay más gente, there are more people than Ugo and Anna. So please feel free, adelante, yeah, feel free to participate and write in the two sent the two halves, las dos partes, the two halves of the sentence to make a sentence with the past perfect. And I'm going to have a little bit more water. <laughs> All right, Anna jumped straight to eight. So I think she she heard me when I said it looks like Anna is doing the even numbers, los pares. And Ugo, there he is, number five. Okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna read out Ugo first because it's five, and then we'll go to Anna doing number eight. Somebody has to do seven. Um, Ugo says, number five, I couldn't find the post office because Someone had taken my map. Yes. Yes. Good, Ugo. Um, unfortunately, desafortunadamente, unfortunately, my map is on my phone. <laughs> so someone had taken my phone and I couldn't find the post office. I couldn't find anything. Anna says for number eight, the house fell down. Because there had been an earthquake. Good. So fall down, another phrasal verb in this case is colapsar. Okay, o caer, but colapsar. The house fell down because there had been a big earthquake. Why did the house fall down? Oh man, there had been such a big earthquake before. <laughs> All right. Lots of uh, lots of participation. I like this. Anna and Ugo, thank you very much. And I hope this helps. I hope my my hope, mi mi idea is my idea is that this this hour or these forty five minutes, you know, maybe it's not something new, but it's something, it's time to practice. You're at home and everybody can participate. And this is free. It's free, interactive English. And I'm glad to see Ugo and Anna taking full advantage of it. Ugo has got number seven. Oh, Anna did number nine. Oh, Anna did an odd number. <laughs> so that leaves Ugo. You have to do number 10. Uh, Ugo says for number seven, I didn't finish my homework because I stayed up too late. Well, Ugo, I don't know about number seven. I think number seven, we have to think about it. Yo había quedado despierto. I didn't finish my homework because I stayed up too late. I Uh, okay, I guess it's the context. Depende del contexto. Yeah, uh, maybe you want to do your homework in the morning and you you hadn't finished your homework because you were too tired and you slept in, but um, it doesn't really work, number seven. 
grammatically, yes. Grammatically, yes. But the meaning is a bit confusing. So let's think about number seven again. Maybe there's a, there's a better answer. It's a silly answer. It's a silly answer. And una pista, a clue. Uh, Ugo, it's related to your answer in number one. Yeah, look at your answer for number one. And you'll see why you didn't finish your homework. Um, Anna did number ten, nine. He failed his exams because he hadn't studied enough. Okay. Yeah. He hadn't studied enough. So let's try to fix number seven. And finish number ten. And then we can move on. I think this is good. Oh, shoot, I'm in the way. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so number number 10, uh-oh, I'm missing a I'm missing a word. In fact, in number 10, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to uh, apologize and fix this very quickly. There we go. We went to the supermarket. We went to the supermarket. So not only was I in the way, yeah, estaba <laughs> obstaculando. I was in the way of number 10, but I completely forgot a word in the sentence. I had completely forgotten to put a word in the sentence. Uh, we went to the supermarket because... Why did they go to the supermarket? What do you think? We went to the supermarket because we'd run out of milk. Perfect. Okay. Ugo, I think I'm going to give you... Oh, yeah, Ugo. I didn't finish my homework, yes, because the dog had eaten it. Yes, okay. This is the, the classic excuse, like, excusa... The classic, no? The classic excuse. Where is your homework? Oh, my dog ate it. I don't have it. Okay. <laughs> he, he didn't finish his homework. I didn't finish my homework because the dog had eaten it. Excellent. Excellent, Ugo. Excellent, Anna. Awesome. Thank you for the participation. Let's look here. All right. This one's for you. Um, we're going to do it a little bit together. But if you want, give me the answers as I am reading it to you. You are listening. Okay. Let me, I want to talk to you. You are listening to the pronunciation. You're listening to my intonation, my enunciation, the way I'm saying it, como vocalizo the words and the sentences and you can give me the answer in the past perfect you use had or hadn't and the participle of one of these verbs up here okay escape want finish follow Ugo got me already. Okay, thank you, Ugo. Fantastic. Okay, so I had always wanted a parrot as a pet, but my mother would never let me. I'm going to get out of the way. One day, however, after I had... Oh, boy, I almost, I almost gave you the answer. <laughs> One day, however, after I... Uh, wait for Ugo or Anna or anybody. Yeah, throw in my sentence. One day, however, after I... Wait, I think I got... Yes. I had always wanted a parrot as a pet. But my mother would never let me. She would never let me. Let is dejar o permitir. My mother would never let me. That photo is not me, by the way. Yeah, that I have more hair <laughs> at the moment. Uh, one day, however, after I... Ugo, you are on a roll. On a roll. Ugo is on a roll. Okay, to be on a roll, estar en racha. Estar en racha. 
Stararacha. Okay, Ugo is on a roll. One day, however, after I had... Oh, come on, give me my answer. Yes. One day, however, after I had finished my homework, I went for a walk. On my walk, I saw a beautiful parrot sitting on the back of a bench in the park. I was sure it... I was sure it... I was sure it... Maybe I can make myself smaller and then I can fit with you on the screen. I think so. And I'm not in the way. I think that works. There we go. So now I can be with you and uh, talk with you. And you can help me finish this paragraph. On my walk, I saw a beautiful parrot sitting on the back of a park bench. I was sure it... I was sure it had escaped Ugo and flown here. But where did it come from? I tried to take it home, but I couldn't pick it up because it... Because it... Hmm... Why couldn't I pick it up? What did it do before I tried? I was sure it had escaped and flown here. Ooh, it had decided... Mm, no, Anna, no. It had decided me. You have to look also after, after the space, okay? Look after the space. After the space, that way. You have to look after the space. Okay, before and after. Remember, on the exam, on the preliminary exam, you do have a text like this, and you will have to answer the... You will have to enter the word. But I couldn't pick it up because it... Mm, me... Okay, so we have VNL says it had followed me and flew off. No, again, why? Follow is seguir. Okay, I couldn't pick it up. No lo podía recoger o coger. Why couldn't I pick it up? Pick up is coger o recoger. Why couldn't I pick up the parrot? Why couldn't I grab the parrot? Why couldn't I grab the parrot? Not because it had followed me, but if a parrot and gets scared, what does it do? It flies away. It flew off. To fly off is uh, salir or uh, yeah, salir volando. Okay, it flew off. Salir volando. To fly off. The past of fly off. Yeah, okay, good. Ugo, Anna, it had see me. Okay, you got the right verb, but Ugo, spot on again, seen me. Very good. And we have V and L. Um, exactly. It had seen me. Me había visto. It's, it had seen me. It had seen me, and it flew off. I told my mother about it when I got home, of course, and she told me to look out the window. There it was, the same parrot. It, mm, me, home. A mi casa, my home. Hey, Ugo, you got it. It had followed me home. Me había seguido. It had followed me home. So we put out flyers, pamfletas. We put out flyers and an ad in the newspaper trying to find the owner. Okay, so we put out an ad, but no one answered. No one called us. We, mm, 
No, we had seen. No, we had seen to keep it. That doesn't work, Ugo. Yeah. We had... I think we only have one verb left. Escape. Oh, wait. I am not putting in the answers. I'm sorry. It had seen me and flew off. It had followed me home. Um, so I think we have want, finished, decided. Yes, very good. Ugo, Anna, and... Whoops. Finished. Okay, uh, V and L, we used finish up above, so we couldn't use it again, but um, Ugo's got it. We had decided to keep it after trying to find its owner for two months. So we tried and we tried and we tried and we tried, and finally we, we had decided to keep it. We had decided to keep it. Okay. After trying to find its owner for two months, we named him Oscar, and he's still my best friend. Okay, so good examples of, in a, of using the past perfect in a story to talk about two events in the past, one before the other. I had because, blah, I'm sorry, blah, blah, because I had blah, blah, blah. two in the past. All right. Now, thank you. And I want to ask you for questions or doubts that you have about the past perfect or the present perfect usage. Even if you're Spanish, you can ask me about a confusing translation. I do speak Spanish. I have been living in Spain for 19 years now, so my Spanish is very good. If you are confused about something, if you have a question about something, if you have a doubt, oh, I'm not sure about this, um, now is the time to ask me. If you have a question about the pet exam, um, feel free to ask me, okay? Um, I think I can open this up for maybe five or 10 minutes. And then um, hopefully we can uh, solve any of your doubts. I would like some feedback also on the, on the class today, positive or negative. I am starting, I've just started these classes. Acabo de empezar las, las clases. So any comment? Any feedback would be very, very much appreciated. Is the audio good? Is the content good? Is the video okay? Um, can you see any improvements? Alguna mejora? Anything at all? Any doubts about the exam? Very much appreciated. I started these videos because I want to try to help people who are preparing for the exams, but maybe the academy that they went to or they have been going to has closed. Um, thank you, Ugo. No questions. Have a great day. Have a great evening. And I hope to see you uh, next week or tomorrow for the first certificate class. The first certificate and advanced class um, will be quite good as well. Thank you very much, Ugo. Um, as I was saying, I started these classes because I want to help people prepare for the exams because maybe their academy has closed or they're in school and they can't continue. Um, or even they just are looking for another resource, otro recurso. And I'm here to answer your questions live. And um, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the basic of it, the base of it. Tomorrow I will have the first certificate class and the advanced class. Um, I separated the B1 class from the B2 class because I think that 
the B1 class, um, you can use a little more structure. It can be a bit more step by step. And in the first certificate and the advanced class, um, I think that the vocabulary that we're going to use, I think it's a little too advanced. It's demasiado avanzado. It's too advanced for um, the B1 level, for your level. Okay, well, I don't see any questions. Um, I appreciate everybody staying. I appreciate all of the the interaction, especially Ugo, Anna, and V. I don't know your name, V and L. Um, I'll give maybe another 30 seconds because of the delay. But other than that, I really appreciate, again, everybody, as I said, you can please... Um, which way do I have to point? You can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, you can follow me here on YouTube. Uh, please tell your friends, tell your family, tell anybody you want. I'm just starting out, and I really hope that we can come to... Uh, uh, not come to, that's not the right word. I'm hoping that this is successful, and it helps you, and that's what I'm here for in the end, is I really just want to help everybody out. Instagram, Facebook, email, comments, chats, wherever the chat is, I don't know, uh, and subscribe. Thank you very much. And uh, oh, where's my thing? Yeah, here we go. Everybody, have a great week. Stay safe. And I'll see you next week. Take care.